Officers, hear me. The clear thinking, low emotion, non-compliant perp is the most dangerous one you'll face. Hi everyone, welcome to today's badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. And I am your co-host, Mike Wilber. Today's video comes to us from right over there in Mesa, Arizona. Palm pepper spray is next generation OC spray. It's hot, hot at 1.4% major capsaicinoids and its modular design means you can customize it exactly to you. Three different setups, lots of different color combinations. You can make it exactly as you like. And the flip top safety prevents accidental discharges. It's 10 to 12 foot range and 25 half second blasts. Make sure that you can keep that long range eye poke at long range. I trust Palm OC and I recommend it for everyone for self-defense. You're seeing here some images from Mesa's real time crime center. They got a call of a shooting in a complex, like somebody actively discharging rounds in the complex. Uh, they're headed towards that complex and they see a guy matching the description running across the street here. So you see the cops kind of running in towards the place where the shots were fired. But then the real-time crime center folks are calling them out and going, hey, the guy that just ran across the street's the dude that you're probably worried about. So they're going to follow him there and they follow him over to another apartment complex across the way. Start calling him out because he's kind of around these apartments. Let's listen in on the badge cam audio from here. He just went inside the apartment. You guys hear me? He just he, went, he just opened that door. Uh, black male with a hoodie. It looked like they negotiated, tried to get him out for quite some time. Let's continue to listen in on what they say. He's coming out again. Coming out. Mace, please come out with your hands up. Come out with your hands up. Put your hands up. Can't see him. Come on out here. Someone take over verbals. Come on out here with your hands up. Keep walking. Yo, this is the Mace Police Department. He just stuck down. Do what you're told. You get to your safety. Come out with your hands up. Walk this way. Harper put his hands up and down at different times as officers continued to ask him to keep his hands in the air. As Harper lifted his hands up again, he suddenly pointed a handgun and began shooting at officers. I'm gonna go chase him. Jesus! Oh, he's not listening. He's ducking down again. Oh, shit. Obviously, we didn't see a whole lot on the officer's badge cams, but there was surveillance video from the apartment complex. Again, with no audio, you can see the guy tucks the gun between his legs and puts his hands up like, hey man, I'm okay, and, and he's talking with them while they are trying to negotiate him to surrender. But again, he didn't put the gun down, he's got it tucked between his legs, and then eventually when he decides that he is gonna run out of time, he grabs the gun and picks it up and discharges rounds at the officer. The officer with the rifle got some hits back on the guy, and, and he fell right there as he was running forward but he has the gun in his hand. So this is a video here from the airship, from uh, the eye in the sky. And so that you can see, he does have the gun in his hand. That hand is still moving around. So they left him there for a while and tried to you know, get him to toss the gun away. He wouldn't do it, stopped responding. So then SWAT kind of you know, came in to finally get him into custody. Dude actually survived his injuries here. I didn't hear any reports of injuries from the original shots fired call, so I don't think anybody was injured there. This dude is obviously facing a bunch of charges for shooting at the cops as well as for the original shots fired. And thankfully no one else was harmed. Hey, you know, we say it all the time. Marksmanship is the master, right? When's the last time you worked on yours? Did you know in the Aspen Unlimited app, we now have 15 full-length firearms training classes in there for anybody to take. Come and join us, would you?
I gotta say, Mike, the thought of a real-time crime center with government agents watching surveillance video of where people go makes me not very comfortable. Yeah, well, you know me, I, I say it all the time. I have a libertarian streak in me a mile wide. Um, you know, one could argue um, that this is just something the public could see if they were standing in the right place. So it's not really a crazy surveillance state. I'll leave that up to people in the comment section to discuss how they feel about the, the real the real time crime center. But in this case, at least, we saw that it potentially did a lot of good. This guy could have been in the wind and gone before you know they figured out that he was the one that ran out of that complex. So again, uh, let us know in the comments, what do you think about the real-time crime center? And, and listen though, I, I wonder as well here, I, I mean, I get, okay, he's not actively shooting anybody right now, so we're gonna chill, we're gonna, we're gonna maintain some space, we're gonna talk to this guy. And I think that that was an option. I, I do think though with him, you know, ingressing on a, a known residential place, danger to those citizens there, that if they'd have pushed in on this guy and, and forced the action, I think that might've been a right choice too. Yeah, po possibly, John. This is the thing, you know, you and I, um, people say that we're Monday morning quarterbacking. What we what we get to do is is know the totality of the circumstances after the fact and then, you know, discuss what might have been done better. We're not doing that to second guess anyone. Generally speaking, we're doing that because people are watching these videos. Now, watching this video, you have to ask yourself that question. Should they have pushed in sooner? Um, you know, I, I don't know what other units they had. I don't know if the airship was up at this point and was able to say, OK, this guy's right here and he's not moving. But these officers have to make decisions in real time, usually very quickly, usually without enough information to make the decision we would have them make. And, and listen, because they got to make those decisions, sometimes you go, OK, wait a minute. Nobody is actively dying right now. We can chill out. We can you know, kind of wait and see what happens. Call this guy out. I do think they use their verbal skills incredibly well here. I think that you know, they said, hey, one person talking at a time, one person handling verbals. And I, I love that our officer had a rifle here because again, you got a known shots fired call. I absolutely want to grab either the patrol carbine or the defensive shotgun in order to handle a problem like this. And, and if you don't know kind of what distance you're going to handle things at, the defensive carbine is probably, you know, the patrol rifle, probably the right choice. And, and I want to notice here that again, as he gets going, gets shots on this guy, okay, fine, I got to make some action here. And he does exactly that. Gets shots on the dude and you see his pace of fire here is a, is a good pace, right? He's getting into his sights, seeing his sights. And, you know, listen, I, I can comment and say, if you recognize he's running a Lancer mag, he's clearly got a low power variable optic on the rifle. It looks like it's well equipped to me, which tells me chances are he's trained with it a little bit. I mean, you know, gear, gear don't buy skill, but uh, he handled his business here and that's important when the chips are down. Yeah, frequently in these videos, John, we see officers who, you know, are just running a bone stock pistol with no light and no optic on it. And we comment, hey, you know, it's the, it's the 21st century. It's time to maybe update your equipment. When we see someone like this who clearly has a clue, who clearly is trained with this stuff, who's not panic firing, who, you know, gave this guy time to react in, in a way you would hope he would react and turn himself in and throw his hands up. Um, and this officer just waited there and was extremely professional, extremely proficient uh, and, and did the job that had to be done. At some point, you know, if the bad guy draws a gun and, and, and has it aimed at you and your fellow officers, it's time to get to work. And he got to work very quickly and without with a minimum of emotion, John, he didn't appear to be doing anything other than handling the business just the way it needed to be handled. So kudos to him. I also want to say here, this is the most dangerous criminal to deal with, right? This guy is clear thinking, he is low emotion, and he is non-compliant. And when we say, when you're negotiating with somebody, the clear thinking, low emotion, non-compliant person is the most dangerous person to deal with. This is exactly why, because he can just decide in the moment, I now have the advantage, I'm showing you my hands, I'm okay until suddenly I'm not when I feel like I have the advantage. Now clearly this guy, I mean, did he think he was gonna win a gun battle against 14 cops? My guess is he actually felt like he was gonna get away from these guys. And, and this is the most dangerous kind of a violent criminal actor that will kill you if you don't act to stop him. I think, John, this portion of the tape really should be played over and over and over again during training for law enforcement. To, to drive home the point that until the person is both in custody, meaning restrained, you know, their hands are behind their back, handcuffed and double locked, and searched, thoroughly searched, they are still potentially a threat. And you don't let your guard down. You don't say, okay, well, he's got his hands up. Obviously, I know how the rest of this situation is gonna go. He's gonna turn himself in. There's gonna be no problems. These officers didn't do that. I'm just saying, if you're watching this as an officer, pay attention because this is something that can really happen. And it does happen. You just saw it. This guy claimed to be turning himself in 
had his hands up, was maybe negotiating, trying to, to work some things out, and then all of a sudden he produces that gun and becomes an immediate threat. So if you're watching this, understand the person with their hands up feigning compliance may be doing just that, feigning compliance and not really complying. So you got to stay frosty and stay in this thing. Keep your head engaged until you're sure that person is no longer a threat, which is what they did. They really did. And I also want to thank here, you know, I understand why they waited here. This guy still has a gun in his hand, still moving. Again, shot at cops, shot at people in the street. They're not going to move in quickly on these guys. And I just want to take a minute here at the very end to commend. This is a SWAT team that came in and eventually took this guy into custody. And again, he survived these wounds. And and listen, what what giant balls it takes to, to go in on a guy who you know wants you to die. And... Um, not fill him full of lead, but instead take him into custody and then, you know, render first aid to him, get him to the hospital. So then that way he can face the criminal justice system, but have a chance at rehabilitation and turning his life around. I just want to commend these guys. And, and listen, I, I think these Mesa PD cops did a damn fine job. I think that they, they responded to the threat quickly. They tried their best to get him into custody, handled it when he ended up putting shots on them and then showed great compassion to get him into custody. Well done, Mesa PD. You covered your ASP.